The title of my talk this evening is Think Big, Start Small. So I wanted to start by sharing a true story of a woman who was living in a third world country who was going through a very, very poor section of town and was passing a homeless man who was lying on the street, obviously doing very, very poorly physically. And she stopped and she began to clean him and care for him. And the man was barely conscious, but he was able to sense what was happening. And he asked, you know, why are you doing this? And the woman replied, because you're a child of God. We hear stories like that, and I think it touches us. We, we hear something like that, it inspires us. Um, I think many of us would probably be reluctant for a variety of reasons to go that far, and that may seem very courageous, but I doubt that anyone is thinking of this as a monumental act or anything that would gain world recognition unless you recognize it or have guessed that it is the story of how Mother Teresa began her ministry of helping the poor and the homeless in the poorest parts of Calcutta. She had received a calling to leave the convent and the school where she was teaching at uh, St. Mary's in Calcutta, uh, and instead to just go out on her own and start her own ministry uh, to live amongst the poorest of the poor in Calcutta and to help them. That was a pretty big calling. She apparently heard a voice on the train that told her that that was what she needed to do. Go live amongst the poor of Calcutta and help them. Pretty big. I don't know, I think I would have probably put in my earplugs at that point if I got a calling like that, but she followed it. She didn't have a business plan. She didn't have any charts or graphs, consultants on how to do this, but she started. And as I re remember in the um, documentary that I saw where I first heard this story, uh, later when her ministry was established, when you know, she had worldwide different, uh, she had branched out where uh, there were worldwide ministries that she had started, people would try to discourage her if she came up with some big new idea, saying, you know, that's just too big, it's gonna to be too hard. And she would remind them that her ministries, all of what they were seeing happening worldwide, began with helping one person, and then it revealed itself from there, step by step. You know, we've all probably heard the Taoist saying that the journey of a thousand steps begins with the first step. Well, in the science of mind, I'd say we would probably say, actually, the journey of a thousand steps begins before the very first step. It begins with an idea. The idea is what prompts us, if we are willing to follow it, to take the first step. You know, everything we teach in this manifest universe comes out of the realm of consciousness. Everything in the material world is preceded by consciousness, by an idea that becomes manifest. If you go back to the creation story in the book of Genesis, which we don't take literally, it's not just a story of how God made the world, it's a story of how creation is continually happening. Um, you know, not just this one time, the first period in which the earth and humans uh, and, and the world was created. And what does it begin with? It begins with God saying, let there be. So there's an idea of something that could be, and it's being called forth into expression. And we profess that we're all incarnations of God. We are all emanations of this life of God, and we're vessels through which God experiences and expresses its nature. So now we're created, part of that nature is free will, 
to discover that potential for ourselves and to bring it into expression. So whether or not we're awakened to it or realize it, we always feel the impulse of God's nature to bring forth expressions of love, of joy, of abundance, of peace, of goodness. And so we, we will feel that impulse. And then we often say, you know, spirit speaks to us in the realm of ideas. So we'll get this idea. The impulse to experience love will come as an idea of some way to experience a loving relationship or some, some love of doing something in our lives. And we can perceive the idea from the realm of the infinite, but we, because we don't recognize that we're one with the source that will provide for us to fulfill any of its ideas, we can feel overwhelmed by it. Our sense of being separate from God can make us feel like, I'm not enough, there isn't enough. And we sense where we are now, and we can project out to this big idea of where we would want to be, and it just seems out of reach. Now, how often have we felt a really strong impulse for some greater good that we, we didn't even explore because it just felt like it was too much or from where we were right in the moment when we thought of it, it would just be too hard or, you know, we probably would fail because we couldn't perceive ourselves from this place actually being able to get to that place. And I'm, I'm not talking about every idea. Okay, we, ideas flow through us. Again, we're part of an infinite mind, and so all kinds of ideas will, will flow through our minds, and um, we don't necessarily have to go with every one. As a matter of fact, some of them are not necessarily good ideas, and we shouldn't pursue them, or uh, we should just let them float on back into the realm from which they came. But I'm talking about the ones that recur. You know, the, the ideas that come to us that really that tug at our heart, you know, that keep nudging us to, to explore, to be open to. You know, maybe, maybe it's that new career. Maybe it's some new venture that we've been talking about or thinking about, like, boy, would I love to do that someday, a new hobby, a relationship, a way to experience some much better health. Maybe it's a, an idea of pursuing a new branch of education, you know, to, to gain wisdom in some area that we've, we've wanted to gra gain greater wisdom. It might be part of a larger cause. You know, it might be a calling like, I just wish I could do something to contribute to world peace, poverty, the environment, social injustice. Those are pretty big topics. You know, and to just say, okay, I'm going to go out there and you know, help, help to contribute to world peace. It can seem very big, and the sense of disparity between where we are and where we'd like to be can, can feel so big that we just get paralyzed. And we don't even want to take it on. And so we just push away that impulse. We, we kind of stuff it and go on about our lives. But then something in us feels unfulfilled. How often had we, have we had that experience where later we go, I kind of wish I'd actually explored that. And you know, this is normal. I think we all, we've all had those things that we look back and go, boy, I just wasn't even willing to take the first step to explore that. And it's not even that we are necessarily, if we take a few steps, going to go all the way. Because one of the things about taking steps is that each step along the way, we gain greater insight. If we stay you know, in the idea of what's the, the ultimate goal, where am I trying to go with this, as we move along, we may realize, OK, that idea that I had initially, maybe that's not the way I I really want it to take shape. But it got us to this point to then go to the next point. So what I think is helpful is when we first get that inspiration, and it's really calling to us. It's not just a fleeting idea. It's really calling to us. 
I think it's good to start with a sense of the big picture. So we start with that big picture of what is it that we want to accomplish? You know, sense what qualities of God we'll experience more fully or that we'll feel are more fully expressed through us if we achieve that goal. And so we, we get that feeling of what it is that we are trying to bring forth into expression. When we do that, we align with those qualities of God that already lie within us, that they're actually the, one, the, the vibrations of spirit in us that are trying to move us into a greater expression of, of this essence that's within us. And so we, we align with that. And then when it feels so overwhelming in terms of where we want to go with that, that's when we break it down into really small steps. We're really well served to just look at what would be the first few steps to take rather than think of all the steps we have to get take to get to where we want to go. And when we continue to turn back to the qualities of God that are seeking to express themselves, and then just take one step at a time, we can keep sensing as we move along, OK, that, that just fulfilled itself. That felt good. And that inspires us to take the next step. And each step of the way, we get a sense of, is this really moving me in the direction that I initially had in mind. And if not, we can correct and move in a slightly different direction. But as we allow ourselves to feel the vibration of what's moving us forward and take those steps, each time we take a step, and if we allow ourselves to recognize that we did that and feel the goodness of that one step. Remember in the creation story, God keeps pausing and looking and going, it is good, feeling good about it, and then moving forward. You know, that inspires us to take the, the next step. I had a friend years ago that knew for a long time that if he wanted to have a greater experience of physical health, he had to make some pretty big changes in his life. It wasn't just a simple matter of, change your diet a little bit, get a little bit of exercise. It was lots of exercise, radical changes to the diet if he wanted to be healthy and um, adopt some other, uh, change some other habits. And it felt like such a big thing to him that he, he just couldn't move forward. He couldn't see himself getting there until one day a doctor who said, it's really time that you take this seriously, suggested that he said, just start with one thing. Well, actually, there were two things. One is start drinking more water every day. You know, it's really important to drink water, to hydrate with water. And he said, You're, you work on the first floor. Take a flight of stairs. Take that one flight of stairs. Start there. That was manageable. That was doable. And even though there was this idea of oh, you know, drinking water and taking one flight of stairs when I have this much weight to lose and I have all of this that you know, I need to change. But he followed that. And doing that, he said, just the accomplishment of taking that first step, that gave him the impetus to gradually take on the next and the next and the next. It was about a year and a half of different steps. But a year and a half later, he was almost unrecognizable. You know, he said, well, it's a good problem to have, probably, that I have to go out and get a whole new wardrobe. Actually, he says, I've had to replace my wardrobe several times. So you know, it's, it's that. Be willing. You start with the big idea, but you take the small steps. Remember, we're, we're one with an infinite mind. And so we can see you know, so far beyond where we are right now in the realm of possibilities. 
But if we want those realms, possibilities to be realized, we need to move one step at a time. And I uh, recently heard someone was telling me about a woman who just felt really strongly about helping kids with education. But again, it just seemed like, you know, that's such a big thing, helping kids with education. Where do I start? She, she didn't necessarily want to become a school teacher, but one day she had the idea of calling a friend who was a social worker and learned of organizations where she could go in and volunteer and help with kids who were challenged with reading. And before you know it, she was working part-time at one of the organizations and volunteering at others. And so it's, again, it's the idea of seeing the big picture, but then if we feel overwhelmed, you know, spirit isn't expecting us to just manifest it all at once. There's a part of spirit that obviously enjoys the incremental process, otherwise things wouldn't unfold incrementally. Yes, sometimes we have those quantum leaps and they're wonderful, it's amazing when we get from here to there just that quickly, but that doesn't seem to be the way spirit seeks to experience unfoldment in the world. And if we accept that, we can see the beauty of each incremental step that we take. So I would ask you to consider you know, what things have you thought about doing that would bless your life, but that just seem like, oh, that's too big to take on? We all have, I think, a few things on our list. What ways have you felt called to be of service to others, but felt, Ugh, it's just going to be too hard, or how could I do that? In either of these categories, what one one small step could you take toward that bigger idea and feel a sense of accomplishment? What one step could you take toward that bigger idea and just feel a sense of accomplishment for having taken that step? Going back to Mother Teresa, she once said, I never look at the masses as my responsibility. I look at the individual. I can only love one person at a time, just one, one, one. So you begin, I began, I picked up one person. Maybe if I didn't pick up that one person, I wouldn't have picked up 42,000. The same thing goes for you. It's the same thing in your family, the same thing in your church, your community. Just begin, one, one, one. Let's take a moment to turn our attention inward. And so I invite you to turn your attention to a change that you'd like to affect in your life or in the world. Just take a moment to think about that and examine what spiritual quality would be more fully expressed through that change or through pursuing that goal. And whatever predominant aspect of God's nature you feel would be more fully expressed. Allow yourself to sit in the felt reality of that experience being fulfilled because that quality already lies within you. And so now think of one small, simple step that you can take to express that quality to some greater degree, to move you forward toward whatever goal you would like to achieve. Just one step. Imagine yourself taking that step 
and just feeling the goodness of just doing that. You took that one step. And as you feel the goodness of that, feel that quality of God then moving you to take the next step. And then maybe the step after that. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any sense of lack or not enoughness that prevents you from taking and celebrating each step towards some greater good. And follow that up by setting your intention to embrace a greater sense of joy and celebration of each step, each action that carries you toward a goal in which you are expressing and experiencing more of your divine nature. And so it is from this place that I invite you to join me in consciousness in knowing the truth, the spiritual truth about some of the human challenges that are encountered here in this world. As we absolutely accept that presence of God as the one life out of which all, all creation comes into being and that is living fully and equally present in all parts of creation. I absolutely know that this one lives through and as me, as every person gathered on this virtual service, every being everywhere. We are all emanations of the one life of God. And so I speak this word knowing for those who may be experiencing any discomfort, any pain around the change that we experience along the journey in our human experience. That while spirit remains birthless, deathless, absolutely constant and unchangeless, unchanging, that this one also is continually changing in the realm of form. And so where there's any sense of loss, of anything that we have experienced, even if it's a loss of loved ones. We know that this one is the one in which we are eternally connected. It is one that we can call forth and experience in some new way when a form that we have become accustomed to has left, has dissolved. I absolutely know for anyone that it's experiencing any form of dis-ease or discord, that the nature of the divine in all of us is one of perfect well-being, perfect health, perfect wholeness. And so as we embrace that vibration of spirit as well-being in every way it can be experienced, we see the experiences of dis-ease and discord dissolve. We see the various forms of healing coming forth Right now, with so many concerned about the pandemic and experiencing suffering as a result of it, we know that there is a vibration of perfect health and well-being that reveals the perfect pathways of healing for this and any other form of disease and discord. For those who are feeling stifled that are not feeling fulfilled in their creative expression, let us know that there is that nature of God in all of us that is there to give of itself in some unique way through us that is absolutely of value to the world. And so as we know this, where there is this sense of not being fulfilled for anyone, knowing that spirit is there, that that idea comes forth of how to be more fully expressed and how to be in that place where what we have to give is valued and absolutely those who are not feeling it now are absolutely stepping into being fulfilled. I know that this one in which we all live is infinite by nature. It is the infinite source of every form of good that we can experience and pass on to others. And so as we open up to that vibration of infinite abundance, 
I know that those who are experiencing any form of lack and limitation suddenly see an expansion in their abundance as the capacity to give and receive love, to be creative, to celebrate creativity around them. If it's in the area of finances, to know that God is always there to source us with everything we need beyond need so that we can generously give back. And that abundance is realized. And I know that for anyone feeling any sense of separation from love, that love is the nature of each and every one of us. It is the core nature of God. And as we know that truth collectively right now, there's an opening to an expansion of love, be it a capacity to be more loving with ourselves, with others, to put more love into the actions that we carry out. I know that love is the answer and it is that place in all of us that is always there to be called forth. And so knowing that the impulse of love is for greater good, let us honor its impulse and set our intentions for greater good in silence. So whatever these intentions may be, whether they be for greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let's just absolutely know that that impulse we are feeling is the impulse of God for more of itself to be known and realized. And as we know that God is at the center of all these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself, and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And it's with a heart filled with gratitude to know this truth that I release this word, knowing it's already done in the mind of God. And so it is. Together we say, Amen.